I got my mind set on you. Well, your box set anyway. Chatting tracks. Let's talk music. Hi, it's Robbie. It's Chatting Tracks. Let's talk music. Let's talk music indeed. In a minute, we're going to talk about the uh, Living in the Material World 50th Anniversary box set. But stick around to the end. I'm going to talk to you about this CD, which I got. It's a bootleg. leg. Shh, don't tell anybody. But I got. Uh, we're going to talk about that at the end. Uh, anyway, yeah, so as I was saying, it's the 50th anniversary of Living in the Material World. Um, and I was digging around and I found I've got a copy which I've not um, even opened yet. So it's from, I think it's an original from 1973. And it's got a dollar sign on it. I don't know where I've got it, but it's never even been opened. So the inside's going to be amazing when I do crack that open. I probably won't know because it looks like I've got two copies. I must have bought another one, so I didn't have to open it. Um, yeah, so 50th anniversary. I love this album. I think it's absolutely fantastic. It's a beautiful album. Um, I think it's one of George's strongest albums. I'll put it over uh, um, All Things Must Pass Myself. Um, you can let me in the comments if you think I'm wrong, but I just think it's great. Um, okay, so it come out. I think it's the fourth album. We're going to go through it in a minute because you've got Wonderwall. You've got uh, the concert for Bangladesh. Then you've got that one, and then you've got Dark Horse. I'm not a big fan of Dark Horse, but there we are. Anyway, let's go get into it, and we'll start looking at some of the box sets and what you can get. Let's have a look at that, shall we? In honor of its 50th anniversary, George Harrison's Living in the Material is being celebrated with a suite of new releases, overseen by Danny and Olivia Harrison, featuring the stunning new mixes by Paul Hicks, which elevates the album with a sonic upgrade, delivering a sound that is brighter, richer, and more dynamic than ever before. Now, it's interesting um, they've sort of di have done this. They've released a track out already, uh, Give Me Love Track 18. Um, I can't put it on because they'll copyright smash me, so I can't play it. But interestingly, I just looked at Queen and the Queen 1 album. I'll put a link in the description at the end so you can check it out. Um, and they've tweaked with that quite a bit. Now, they've made the drums and the guitar sound brighter, but they've auto-tuned Freddie Mercury. And people in that world are going absolutely mad about it. They think it's a real mistake to mess with the dynamics of Freddie, whether he's wrong or right, pitched higher or lower. You've got to keep it as natural as you can. And it looks like they've, they've tinkled with that. The rest of it sounds amazing. Um, but people are really, really kicking off. When you play the um, Give Me Love track 18 demo, which is an extra on the album, it's amazing. It sounds beautiful. They've not done anything with it. They've just made it a little bit deeper in the bass, made the guitars a little bit brighter. Just little tinkles here and there, which make it just a, a, a more contemporary sounding album. And that's the way to do it, I think. It just sounds absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah, it, it, it's really, really great. Um, looking at this as well, it says there, ignore that not sign in bit, and it, where it says new George Harrison album there. That's Andrew Dixon, who does a Beatles YouTube channel. He's fantastic. If you like it, check out his stuff. He's absolutely brilliant. Um, he's, he loves it just as much as everybody does. He's, he's, he, but he really goes deep, deeper than I ever do. He's, he's absolutely amazing about it. So limited to 5,000 units globally, the Super Deluxe Album Edition is two CDs, two LPs, and a Blu-ray of Dolby Atmos, if you like that sort of thing, and 12 unreleased Harrison tracks, and a 60-page booklet. So they're going for the, the big sell, first of all. Um, um, and also it's got some pictures as well, and a previously unheard single, Sunshine Life For Me, Sail Away Raymond, featuring Robbie Robinson, Levon Helm, Garth Hudson, and Rick Janko of the band. Wow, alongside Ringo. That's going to be amazing, because I know I know George loved the band, and too right, their, their album, you know, Music From The Big Pink and that stuff, is absolutely brilliant. I'm amazed he didn't release it, because he loves that band a lot. So that'd be really interesting to listen to. It's got Harrison on it as well. Uh, sorry, not Harrison. It's got Ringo on it as well. I love that as well there. If you see, it's got on the back of it, it's got like Apple Studios, it's got the original tape box cover with all the doodles on it. I love it when they do that. I just think they should do them all that way. All the box sets should have the original tape cassette doodles on the back. That way you can turn it around. You can have the original cover if you want or turn it that way and just have a line of the original ones because I think they look beautiful when they do that. It just, I don't know what it is. It just adds a little bit of authenticity to it. It looks like it's not too polished in a weird way. I love it. So what you got in there? You've got a Give Me Love, Peace on Earth, the 24 mix as well. Interestingly, I was thinking about it the other day and, you know, Give Me Love is George's version of Imagine. So if you put them together, you've almost got the same song. Although John said, imagine no possessions while being in a mansion and George sung living in the material world while being in a mansion. So between them, they both had mansions and they did it that way around. It's really, really cool. But I love this album. It's, it, in, you know, it, before the remix, I just love this album. I think, like I said earlier, I think it's his strongest album. Living in the Timber, Sue Me, Sue You Blues is brilliant as well because obviously he was getting done for My Sweet Lord and stuff as well. And uh, they're suing each other, the Beatles and stuff like that. Brilliant. I just love the way he's, he's sort of talking about it like that. Um, give me love um, piece of 18 mix I'll put a link to that in the description because that's on there as well and it, it, it looks great you know it looks like they've just got a really cool you know, oh Miss Odell's on there as well brilliant as well so that, that's going to be on there as well oh they're saying Sunshine's a CD only I don't like that that's got to be on a vinyl surely oh it is on the LP no it's not on the LP you know what when the album comes out I'm going to buy it and review it and I'll let you know if it's on there because if it's not on there that's going to really annoy you unless it's going to be a separate 7 inch single but ideally, you want it on the LP. You don't want it to keep cracking out a separate one, second one. Harrison Estate, send it to me for free so I can review it for you because I don't want to pay for it. 
especially if you've not got that song on it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm going to buy it anyway. Um, that's really cool. So, Living in the Material World, George Harrison's highly praised second solo album. See, I thought it went Wonderwall, All Things Must Pass, Bangladesh, this, and then Dark Horse onwards as well. Um, but apparently, they're saying it's the second original album. Um, following the Beatles' dissolution in 1970, uh, lyrically underscores the enduring exploration of spiritual themes that resonates deeply with audiences. Now, I think the message of Give Me Love and Living in the Material World, the album, is just as important today as it was back then. George was touching on it early. Because, you know, you've got people now that live for just material stuff like Instagrammers and influencers and all that nonsense. That's all they want. They just want stuff. They don't actually want to do anything of, of merit and value. Am I an influencer? No, I'm not. I'm someone that reviews things. I'm not trying to get stuff for free. Actually, I just asked for the box for free. You know what I mean? But the thing is, I like to look at things and analyze it. I'm not just going, hi, everybody. I've just got a new car and da da. You know, you don't get it. Anyway, I'm digressing. So, yeah, it, it, you know, I just think it's a really important message now as it was then. And I think that's why this album is really special because it does, you know, we need peace on earth and we do need love and we do need people to look after each other and stop shooting each other and things like that and just backing each other up a little bit and lifting each other up, not trying to control each other. And that's what this album's saying. And I think you need to look at this album as well as a package as, you know, you've just got the Beatles breaking up, you've got All Things Must Pass, you've got George's Bangladesh concert, and this is just a little bit later and it's all sort of just melding over itself if you know what i mean it's all one big era rather than just a sec second solo album as they're saying it and it's amazing so olivia harrison shares i hope you revisit living in the tim real world or discover it for the first time and as you listen share george's wish for himself and mankind give me love give me peace on earth what a beautiful message what a beautiful beautiful message it's just fantastic and Danny says finally we're overjoyed to present to you with a 50th anniversary package of george harrison's living in the tim real world I wish you just said my dad's album. <laughs> be easy, wouldn't it? For those of you who are just discovering this album, this record was released in the service with deep love for all our brothers and sisters around the world who populate this dualistic system in life we call Earth. Peace be upon all sentient beings. Hey, I mean, what a great message. Not easy to read, though, but really, really good as well. So I'm going to paraphrase some because there's loads to read here, but I'll put a link to this article in the description if you read it yourself. Um, so he said it was recorded in, in uh, 1972 in Apple Studios. Uh, you know, the Beatles had just done Let It Be a couple of years before, and it's all that stuff. Uh, he played all the guitar parts on it as well. He had uh, a tight knit group on there Jim Keltner, Nicky Hopkins, fantastic piano player, Gary Wright on bass, Klaus Foreman, and saxophone Jim Horn. I've just read Mal Evans' book, and apparently he didn't get, he didn't like Jim Keltner at all, or he, or he didn't see eye to eye with Jim Keltner. Apparently, he said, you know, Jim Keltner was meant to be George's friend, and every time he made an album, his fee went up. He said, that's not our friend's work. So Mal had a real gripe with Jim Keltner. Really interesting read that. Um, I think it's called My Life as a Beatle. Really, really good book. Really interesting. Um, and it's a precursor to the Mal Evans diaries. So they basically summarize the story up into the diaries. And then when you get the diaries, that's when you're going to get some interesting stuff. But there's some revelations in that book. You need to listen to it if you're a Beatles fan or read it. I did the audio book because there's some stuff in there you've really got to, really got to read. It's fantastic. To understand living in the material world, you have to go back to George's experience of 1971. A watershed 12 months full of events that would explore his songwriting. By that summer, he was deep into his response to the mounting humanitarian tragedy in Bangladesh. After repeatedly shuffling between Los Angeles and New York and endless phone calls and meetings, he presented two concerts in Madison Square Garden that combined performances by Ravi Shankar and three supporting musician sets, which was led by George and also featured Ringo Starr, Eric Clapton, Leon Russell and Bob Dylan and others. They need a 4K release of that. I think it's coming soon if it's not already out. It was an emotional period for me, George later said. Uh, because a lot of people had helped with its success and it made me very optimistic about certain things. I mean, I get it, you know, he's trying to do this new thing that no one's done before and I forget if people were knocking it at the time and he, and he just managed to get through it as well. Good on you, George. You did it, mate. So like I was saying earlier, you know, you, you've got to take it as a whole piece of time for George rather than just a solo album. And I think you can hear the influences all over it. Let me know in the comments what you think of the album and, you know, what's your favourite George Harrison album? What's your favourite George Harrison single? You know, did you see him live? I'd love to know that as well. What's your favourite Beatles single? Let's push it just a little bit as well, shall we? Why you here? Why not check out the rest of the channel? Because I've got deep dives, reaction videos, live streams, and I talk about all things music because I just love music. Talking of that, if it's your first time, why not subscribe and help me out on my musical journey? Come on, mate. You know you can do it. Just hit that subscribe button and be on the musical journey with me. If you've already done it, thank you so much. You're an absolute legend. I cannot do it without you. So you're brilliant. Thank you so much. You've helped me get where I want to be. And anyone that subscribes does exactly the same thing. If you're not going to do either, thank you for watching. I really appreciate your time. So, just onto this CD real quick. Obviously, I said at the start I was going to mention it. And this is a bootleg that come out. Um, don't tell anybody, I'll probably get arrested. Uh, and this is from, like, um, 74 onwards. And some of the performances on this are not amazing. But it's great to hear George playing live in the 1970s. 
and I think we need more live George stuff because this CD, good or bad, is really, really great just to hear him playing and enjoying himself on stage. So we need a bit more of this sort of stuff as well. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think George had a bit of a party time around then and his voice on some of this stuff is not the best it's ever been. If you heard it, you know exactly what I mean if you've got this CD. And if not, have a Google. I'm sure it's on YouTube somewhere. Um, but we need more live stuff. So Harrison Estate, come on, get some more live stuff out from George. We just need it. Anyway, thanks for joining me on this one. Um, I'm super excited to get the box set and check it out. I cannot wait to get my hands on it. It's going to be brilliant. You just know it is. And it's a wonderful album. If you've not heard it in a while, dig it out. Go and give it a play. I'll put a link to it in Spotify as well so you can have a listen to it. Because you might think, oh, I can't be bothered. Just go down, click it, play it. Anyway, um, thanks for joining me on this one. I'll see you in the next one. Love and peace. <laughs>